Hello. Welcome back to Anderton's TV. I am the captain. <coughs> I am Digital John. <sighs> Digital John. You see a little lag on digital products. Sorry. That's the problem, isn't it? <clears throat> they always complain about that. <laughs> um, uh, if you are a avid watcher of this channel, you will know that recently I've been asking friends and guests to <clears throat> put together a gigging rig for under a thousand pounds. Uh, normally we'd go shopping, uh, either on the internet or in the store to see what we like, but Digital John here... Did it digitally in advance. He just went, I know what I want, Lee. Dad, Captain, whatever he calls me. Um, I know what I want, I just want this, this, this. And I tried to sort of say, you sure you don't want to, you know, spend a bit more time looking at it? We can check out some other... He was like, no, that's what I would use. So, talk us through. We, I, I have insisted that you at least try some different guitars, uh, yeah. just to give some sense of... Uh, suspense to this video um, but what have you put together mr. John so my first thought was the modeler is the most crucial bit I think so I was budgeting roughly like 250 300 for that um, on the floor we've got GP 200 by Veilton at the minute we're loving the Veilton stuff it's really really great um, there is a GP 200 LT um, without the expression but we thought um, you know, essentially in a gig, well, I thought, essentially in a gig, you'd need a foot pedal, I thought. And you've got um, your XLR outputs and more switches. Yeah, XLRs and just the functionality is just way greater. Um, and it, it does everything. We can go into that in a bit. The next thing I was like, okay, we need something for volume. Uh, the Laney FRFR. You can get two versions of this. The more sort of upright version uh, is a bit more expensive, but. Um, what, what? Sorry, I didn't know there was a second version of this. What, yeah, what? there is, and it's more like an upright. I mean, you, I'd literally used one of these last still, night and put it on its side. Still a 112? Or is oh, it a 212? I think, yeah, right. I can't, I think it might be 212. Yeah. Picture on There's screen now with a little description of what it is. But you can always put this on the side, plonk it on the side, and then you've got you know, a bit more vertical. But this is really, really great. Um, it's got tons of low end to it, so... You've, there's a nice little switch on the back where you can roll off the lows or keep it all in. And I found this works really well, really great for bass gigs as well. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, fun fact. So, um, and the LED strip is a bit of, you know, It's got a, I like it, a reading light. I like it. Yeah, so. it's really, really nice. And then um, tons of volume. I can't remember how many watts. I think it's two, oh, no, I should know that. Well, know we that. could put that on two, screen now as well. Enough um, watts to do a gig with. And then this absolute steel from uh, the andertons.co.uk website, links somewhere. It's mm. amazing. Nobody, uh, John asked if he could try this guitar and none of us, myself and Pete and Oz, none of us could believe that this was the price it was. We all assumed it must be a mistake on our website, but no, we've spoken to Ibanez and our purchasing team and they have said, no, that is that is what it is. It's, this is crazy. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I yeah. did insist, I did say to John, look, just to, to you know, try some other guitars. You never know, you might mm -hmm. surprise yourself. So we've got a good old fashioned uh, Squire Affinity HSS. Yep. I like the flame top nice on it. Nice top. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've got the East Coast just because it's purple uh, and even cheaper um now i've got to ask you john yep you are what us old people refer to as digital native meaning that you really have managed to become a guitar player only ever really using uh effects units and and yep. plugins haven't you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oldies like me and pete find that sort of you know difficult to comprehend um but what is it that draws you to, you know, you, you were you were very, very insistent that your rig was not going to be a, a guitar amplifier and some pedals and stuff. It was yeah. always going to be a modeler and an FRFR cab. So what what is it about uh, this setup that you're just so comfortable There's with? There's something about like having a three piece setup in terms of bits of kit where you literally need solid instrument, something to do all the brains of the tone and then just something for volume. And I like the simplicity of that. And people think it's like, look, model is really complicated and all that. Once you get over the interface of the thing you're using, it's just like, you know, once you get used to an iPhone, the first time you used it, it was like, what is this? And, but now it's fine, do you know what I mean? So um, these don't take long to get your hands on and, you know, um, get, you know, to know your way around. And once you've got that done, the sounds are great anyway. So it's just about getting used to how to dial in the sound. And as we say all the time, once you've got a sound you like, you're probably going to use that most time anyway. Um, so, and, and I suppose, depending on the gig, if, yep. the, if the gig had decent front of house and decent monitoring, you potentially could just even leave that at home yeah. as well if you wanted so to. Yeah, so you can, you don't even have to have the DBs, like you can go straight out the XLRs. If you want, you could even, you know, if you had, 
Say if you're going to a rehearsal room, that's a really common scenario for quite a lot of people. If you're going to a rehearsal room with a band, you just bypass the cab and you can put it into the power section of an amp. You don't need to you know, think about, oh, I don't need that pedal on, I don't need that head or whatever. It's just the same two bits of kit and you don't need to bring this. It's And then if you're on a gig and you can have the luxury of DB, you can have some actual air moving, which is quite nice, even if it's just the vibrations. And then if the sound man's like, I want that as well, obviously you don't need to mic it up. Um, and have all the you know noise annoyance of people thinking, oh no, you need to turn the amp down because the mic. Just put it out the back of the amp with an XLR, um, or out you know another out of there, and it's already in, and it's so clean. You don't have any mic bleed. It's just it's nice. Well, so what did we say this was? Four hundred pounds. Oh, three nine nine. Three nine nine. Yeah. And two ninety nine, I think, or two seventy nine, or something for the. So we're up to seven hundred pounds. So seven. you had three hundred pounds to spare. So let's have a little listen yep. uh, to some sounds on this guitar and we'll look at some other guitars and see. I, I mean, I think you're actually going to come in the most under budget of any guest yep, we've had so far. accessory money. Yes. yes. Cheap so. is your middle name. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just the stock GP200 patch. Uh, we'll go over some sounds in a minute. But I should say as well, um, we, we're trying to capture some of this using room mics because these FRFR cabs are notoriously difficult to mic up because of the fact it's got multiple drivers in it. Yeah. Um, so some of the audio you're gonna hear is just the veil turned straight into our computer interface like you would hear during a normal uh, multi-effects demo. And some of it will be the room. Um, and yeah, it's it sounds fat and powerful and it's much nicer hearing guitars out of something like this than it is out of you know, yeah. studio speakers. Um, much more familiar anyway. Right, sorry, so, I no, interrupted. No, it's all good. So that was Humbucker, I'll just do that again. So one of the reasons I picked this guitar as well, I wanted single coil and Humbucker flavors. Um, this has got a five way. So it, I really like a five way because you get the in-betweens of two and four, which is kind of not stratty stratty, but it does the same effect. Mm -hmm. So bridge Humbucker. <laughs> Heard that in, in the intro, you know how it sounds. It sounds great. It does, really, really good. Um, position two, that is, the sort of back pickups of each. So it's gonna be the back single of this towards the bridge and the back single of the neck. It's a little bit stratty kind of position. Yeah, too, and isn't it? To, let's go on the, uh, I've called it, it's JC200 patch on this. <laughs> it's a bit more like spindly. Um, position three, you got two humbuckers. So Les Paul middle type thing. <laughs> Four. That means uh, single in the neck, but it's the one towards the bridge. And then position five, bridge humbucker. No, neck humbucker. Gonna go back to. Uh, So tons of tons of possibilities with it, really. Um, and then tone knob doesn't have a call tap because you don't need it, really. Um, and then a nice bridge. It's you know it's not an expensive guitar. It's not the smoothest bridge, and you need to really sort of fight with it a bit. You're being terribly kind there, Jim. Um, it's one of those cheapo trem systems yeah. that kind of you know it's. it's I'm rooting for this thing. I it, like it. Yeah, I think it's amazing, <laughs> but the, the trem system sits flat on the body. I don't think it's designed to be a floating trem system. No. And I would strongly suggest that if you don't use it, the tuning will be fine. And the minute you do use it, I suspect uh, you will encounter tuning problems. No, that's all right. I did stretch the strings in before this. But um, yeah, I think what it is really, no pickup rings. That gives it's it the, just like a the, 700 quidish more value it's looking It's this metallic thing. satin finish that you're used to seeing on much more expensive guitars. Like you say, no pickup rings and actually pretty tidy routing around here. Yeah. Uh, the matching headstock, the whole thing. I mean, it, yeah. it looks... Even around the back, it's, you know, it feels nice. Like all the joints of where the paint meets the wood isn't crap or anything like no, that. It's, I mean, it's really good. I, again, this is called the GRX SP170 in the uh, Ibanez's long tradition of ridiculously long model names. Yeah. This is 180 quid. It's... So I think these three I comes to 889, which is, or maybe a bit less actually, because they're not, yeah, it's eight, 887 pounds, I think, or something like that. So I you've got, know. yeah. 
I mean, certainly, I mean, no one's ever, got, I think, to be honest with you, Rabir and Sasha, who are, I think, the only two people to, to have mm. done this challenge yet, I think both managed to get to like 995 pounds. You yeah. know, it's like, you've got, you've got enough. I mean, you could buy a really nice gig bag or something and, and yeah. still have change left over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, well, look, at the moment, we suspect this will be the contender, but let's have a little look at, at what else your um, budget could have got to. Now, you could go the other way. This is even cheaper still. Epic color. Um, this is not a famous brand like the Ibanez one is. This is like a, um, an own brand kind of thing for, for Andertons. Uh, the, the one thing I do think is, is you know, better in inverted commas. It has a, a dual fulcrum floating trim now rather than a, a, a sort of a, a setback trim. But on other details, I kind of think the Ibanez is probably a little nicer as well. I, like John said, the pickup rings are really commonly used on, on affordable guitars just because it means that they don't have to worry too much about how tidy the routing is for the pickups. Whereas if you're not going to have them, you know, the routing's got to be really clean. But The chrome covers are a nice... Mm. But anyway, have a little noodle on that, and then we'll we'll go with it's a chunkier neck on the east coast as well. Uh, this is called an HM1 from memory. Does that sound right to everybody in the room? An HM1. Uh, I don't think the pickups yet. Yeah, this is a, a three-way selector, so we don't have any of the single coil options on here. And is the middle two humbuckers? It certainly yeah. is. Bless you, Pete. Has a volume pedal as well. <laughs> I'm going to do a different sound. Okay. Feels nice. First patch, I really, I, kind of, I really yeah. like that sort of um, smooth, gainy kind of. Action's a bit higher on this one. <laughs> yeah, tw 24 frets though. Um, oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. You can go all the way. Yeah, all the um, octaves. So that's that, or of course the other super famous, probably the most famous of, of all the sort of affordable uh -huh. guitar brands is Squire. Yeah, uh, start on a Squire. This is the Affinity series, so it's kind of the next one up from Bullet series. Uh, We've gone HSS. You can do oh, a back. traditional SSS if you want to. Very nice. um, and this, yeah, this has got the the sort of the flame top for, I don't know, extra flame, I suppose. Fire emojis. Okay, so bridge humbucker. <laughs> I've played far too much in F sharp today. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sounds good. Next sound, I'm gonna go on position two, so that's... I can hear Pete swearing to himself in the control room. It's all good. <laughs> oh, that's fun. What sound is that? So this is just 50s plexi, second right. factory patch. Okay. Um, position two, that one and that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's good fun. Middle pickup. No, not a sharp. I think uh, F sharp is a welcome uh, change from the standard key that Pete and I always play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Position four. Those two normal strat stuff. There's loads of the same 50s plexi patch. Good 
Good stuff. I've, I have a feeling I know which one you're going to choose at the end. I have of this no anyway. idea what you're on about. <laughs> no, really. Uh, would you like the Ibanez back? Uh, neck pick up first. Okay. Just, let's entertain. Does that it, yeah. it feel strutty? But yeah, no. Definitely. I just feel I feel you need I feel you need the Ibanez back. I feel in order for you to sort of continue on your quest to be Tim Benson, you need uh, more modelers and more Ibanez stuff. Yes. Um, and more neck tattoos. Yeah, that's true. Um, Longer hair. I've got some other questions here. So yes. we're, we're, you like that guitar? Which Very is great. much. Very much. I know you like that unit. We've done many demos of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and this, you you already own one of these, right? Yeah. And what an endorsement that is. Um, I would be slightly concerned about a few things here for a live rig. One is, how loud does this really go? You know, I mean, I, I know that, typically speaking, valve amplifiers, you know that even if you've just got 20 or 30 watts on there, you, you, you can normally just keep cranking the thing up and there's very, very few kind of gigs where that won't be loud enough. Solid state, I kind of, you know, I sort of feel like a good solid state amplifier with plenty of headroom will cope and then sometimes like cheaper stuff it, it's easy for a manufacturer to say it's oh it's 300 watts but you, yeah. you suddenly realize that once it's a quarter of the way up it all starts to sound a bit crap um we've got the decibel meter in the corner there we kind of know that we need to be hitting 95 something like that before we kind of really go it's gigable easy all right Right, so yes, volume is on half now. Yeah, Normally, I, I thought you had the volume, I thought you'd go volume full on here and do everything from Well, I'm just at, like with this at noon and that at noon. All right. And that, this is, again, this is just the stop okay, patch. Okay, so this is at noon. So I think we need more. Yeah. So I'm going up here to now, I'm just going to go full. Hundreds. Yes, I there think we, we are. Um, I, I did. And what's that on? Full. And this is on half. So I don't know what the headroom of that is internally, but. Um, 200. 200 watts, is it? Wow. Yeah, I thought I, it was. Good. I was saying, um, as we were messing around there, that I don't. I think that the patches, uh, probably on all multi effects units straight out the box, but certainly on, on this particular one. They're EQ'd with loads of bass end in them so that at low volumes you get that fatness that you sort of think, oh yeah, that sounds great. But as soon as you actually go to volume, yeah. it's got way too much bass end on it. So has this got, if I remember rightly, yep. yeah, the, the, the nice thing about the bigger Veilton is that you've got three band EQ sort of on the fly, haven't you? And you've so, got a global EQ as well. Oh, so brilliant. you can um, just bypass that. You could set your high pass to, I don't know, cut off everything at 80. And then that's all the like that you don't need. <laughs> Um, <laughs> technical. <laughs> all, the, all the Boris Johnson. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. And again, as I said, the high frequency trim, you can trim that and then it just rolls it off. But well, that, I mean, so, all okay. you need. So we, we have my one concern number one. Could you put that back on the stand for me? Yes. Concern number one was that it wouldn't be loud enough. Wrong, obviously, plenty loud enough here. So uh, the second one, and you sort of touched on it with that global EQ thing. I always worry slightly that, you know, you'll get to a gig and the, the, the room will be a little bigger or smaller than the, the previous gig or whatever. Mm. The audience will be bigger, smaller, whatever. And you'll want to tweak something. You'll just want to take the reverb down overall or you'll want to, you know, adjust the EQ slightly. And I always worry that with these things, it's like menu paralysis of like, oh no, I'm going to use, you know, seven or eight different patches. Have I got to go in and adjust each one? But just show me that globally, because I'm not, I don't think I've even seen that before. So, so globally EQ. You've got global button and then this is all your inputs, outputs. If you just scroll down to global EQ there, mm -hmm. press the like joystick main yeah. thing. And then you can either bypass it on or off. Uh, you've got, so if I just add these in, so this is, affecting the low cut mm -hmm. and you can oh it's like a i see what you mean it's not it's not like um what would you call it like it's, it's, it's not like a traditional three band eq it's like a sort of parametric yeah you can do a different band of frequency so let's just you know you can do a peak you can choose the frequency of that peak it's it's mad you'd, you'd have to you'd have to know you'd have to be pretty familiar with where to go and find these settings wouldn't you but i suppose that's the idea is that global is going to affect every single patch in the same way yeah um assume there's no way of doing that with 
say reverb for example that that presumably is patch specific is it like a glo global reverb um i think that is yeah you got like cab match we didn't talk about that which is very handy um yeah i mean some it's got midi these, as well some of these things again if you go back and watch the actual review we did of this overall that might might uh, explain things a bit better um and you, you can assign it to toggle things on and off it just takes a bit of time for this so I've just and, and typically then when you're gigging because you're gigging your current gigging rig is basically the the neural cord cortex into the laney right yeah. so how many where where do you think the where do you think the sort of the the the, the gig changes from something where just you know a guitar amp and a couple of pedals is fine through to something where you might you know i mean so for example on a normal gig how many different patches on the on the quad cortex are you stepping through um well depending on the gig if if it's like a show on the rails type thing like an artist set you can just save them as scenes but if it's more of a spontaneous oh i might want a bit of drive you can have it in stomp mode and just treat it as eight different pedals mm -hmm. Um, but the great thing about like a rig like this, say if you switch to acoustic and it's all going through the same unit, it's, the flat, it's a flat response cabinet, so you don't need an AB switcher to go through an acoustic amp and all that, because it, it all just goes through the same thing. So it's super, like just keep the acoustic next to you and then, you know, if you go to the acoustic, it's there. It's so handy, like this three, I'm going to call it like a three piece set. Yeah. But yeah. No, I, fair enough. And th is there any sort of scenario under which you think this might not be appropriate for, or are you a real advocate of just, you know, using this uh, uh, setup for any kind of gig? Good question. I'm, I'm I can't, nothing jumps to mind. I, I'd be happy using it. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, look, I shall um, put the links below to, so that that's your, I mean, I, I can't believe how, how much you've changed you've got here. What else could John buy? Comment, please. What else could John buy? Yeah. Uh, I think it would be more funny if it wasn't musical related. What should oh, John get buy? I'm going roasted now. Yes, uh, with his 120 odd pounds that you've got to spend. Where's your bandana today? I've got short hair now. It's utility wear. I don't need it, it right so, now. So he could buy a bandana. He could buy a lot of bandanas for 120 yeah. pounds. Uh, so there you go. Uh, well done. If you want to just, just Find a sound, play us out with something uh, Random epic, patch. and um, well, yes, fruit. thank you very much for watching. Uh, which uh, which other presenters would you like me to lay this challenge down to? Would you like to see Pete or Oz or Ben Smith or who else do we have on from time to time? Jack. Dave and Cece. See... Jack. Yeah. Yeah. We'll challenge them all. <laughs> The guitar's bloody brilliant, isn't it? Solid bit of kit. Fair enough. Got a double denim vibe going on at the minute. Subscribe. See you later. Bye. Yeah, like, subscribe.